Hey guys, Kellen again here with Droid Life. Whipping through part two of our Android N developer preview. So if you watched the first video, which I'll put a link to right there, uh, we walked through some of the big stuff like multi-window and the split screen view and the new notification shade and also the new quick toggles panel and the new settings menu and things like that. So if you wanna see those big, big changes, make sure to watch that video. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the other things, the smaller stuff, some of the things we maybe didn't have a chance to show you in that first lengthy video. Uh, before we get going though, we have switched phones. So so I did that first video on the Nexus 6. This is now a 5X. And so I wanted to point out that initially when this all dropped, you could flash Android N via factory image. A number of you probably don't want to go that route and deal with ADB. So the Android beta program is now open, which is a new program for beta releases that has launched with Android N. And if you sign up for it and you have a supported Nexus device, the moment you hit register, you will essentially get a notification to install the update on your phone. It is so simple and quick. Uh, I registered, clicked yes for this phone, and I was ready to update. And it was a big file, but it did walk me right through it. So uh, we have details on that over at the site. So you'll want to sign up for that and get that update if you don't want to go the SDK route, or I'm sorry, the the uh, the factory image route. Uh, so in this video, what we're going to focus on again is some of the littler stuff. So we're going to start actually first with the system system UI tuner. Now, if you, if you, if you don't remember the UI tuner, it was, I think it showed up the first time in the Android M first preview. And essentially what it allowed you to do was toggle on like a night mode and change the, uh, some of the icons that show up in your status bar and things like that. So it's kind of come and gone and features have come and gone from it. Well, it's back again in this version and it has more features than ever. So to enable it, you long press on the settings icon up here and you'll feel a little vibrate and then you'll see, congratulations, you've turned it on. And then you will find it at the bottom of your settings just above about phone. So if we go in there, it warns you that this is not for all, but it's kind of fun stuff and we like that. Uh, so you'll find status bar uh, where you can toggle off the different icons that show up in your status bar. That's not necessarily necessarily new. Uh, in color and appearance, you'll see that night mode is back. And night mode's a bit finicky, but sometimes when you toggle it the first time it comes on, sometimes it doesn't. But so in night mode, uh, I'm going to adjust the tint there, unadjust it. So it turns everything uh, essentially into a dark mode so that when it's nighttime in your house or something and you're in a bright situation, you don't want to be blinded or blinding everyone near you, you have this dark panel in your settings. And so this is essentially what night mode looks like. It's actually awesome, and I wish they would make this official so that uh, everyone could take advantage of it. Um, some other things they've done, though, uh, you can make it automatic so that it will turn on depending on the time of day and location and things like that, so you actually don't have to manually turn it on. It'll just do it automatically, which is awesome. Um, they've also done uh, an adjust tint. And so toggling this back on, by the way, is not always the easiest thing. It is quite beta and finicky. There we go. Uh, so adjust tint. So if, if I don't have adjust tint on, it's just kind of a normal screen. If you change it to on, it sort of does this amberish reddish tint that's supposed to be easier on your eyes in really, really dark situations and things like that. Um, and then you can also adjust the brightness and things like that. So that is, uh, that is your uh, night mode. So if we jump back out of there, though, uh, in this do not disturb section, there's just a couple of toggles in here that you may want to uh, think about adjusting. So one is show with volume controls and the other is volume button shortcut. So that one is already enabled because that is default. And what that means is if you start going well here, start back over here. So if you start doing volume down and you just keep holding it, it then should go into DND mode. So that is that first one. Um, if you enable, well, now I've disabled it. So if I were to do that again for you, go all the way down and go down, you'll see it's not giving me that option. But I did enable the top one, which is show in volume control. So if you add show in volume controls, you then just have like this quick toggle for do not disturb mode at all time, which is accessed via uh, volume control. So kind of a cool little feature there. And I believe that's it. Oh, this is another thing I'm going to enable, which is split screen swipe up gesture it has to do with the multi, the multi window feature. And I'll show you that in just a second. So in the previous video, I showed you that in order to get into multi window, you had to long press on your app switcher button. Um, but with this enable split screen swipe up gesture enabled, actually, all you have to do now is just sort of swipe up on that button and it jumps you right into it. So if we get back out of here and go into something like Chrome, uh, I am in airplane mode, so this isn't actually going to work. But if I were to have Droid Life up and then I say, oh, I want to jump back into my settings, I can just swipe up on there and that takes me into that mode and then I can get in there. While it's not that much much different from um, just long pressing on there and getting into it, it is kind of a quick little little gesture that sort of goes, you can see the screen sort of goes with your finger then. 
you guys can see that, it's one of those cool animations Google's done. So just by dragging, you'll see that. It's very cool and, and it's just kind of a quicker shortcut if you do want to enable that. Obviously there could be some false swipes on there and you may not want to deal with that at all, but um, that is one of the, uh, one of the new features there. Uh, so getting out of the system UI stuff, into actual legitimate features that aren't hidden in behind secret menus. Uh, if you jump into display settings, there is a display size adjustment now. So this is some of the new accessibility stuff they've added, but essentially like a DPI adjustment so you can show more or less on your screen at a time. So here's the default look, but I can go smaller, which means I will then show more stuff on my screen, or you can go way up to super large and show everything really big in case you have, um, you know, trouble reading on screens and things like that. So that's just something they've tossed in there. Um, on that note, if you jump down into accessibility, there's also this magnification gesture that they added. And if you toggle that on, if you are anywhere, you can do a one, two, three tap, and it gets you into a magnified sort of view of whatever you're looking at. So it's it seems pretty rocky at the moment, but it does work. Um, so that's there. Uh, and then finally, that I would just show you uh, the data saver option. So actually back out. So if you go into data usage, you will see this new data saver option. And essentially what data saver does is if you're limited in sort of data usage per month or something like that, you can turn this on and uh, it's a little slow, I think, but it, it takes, uh, essentially it takes away the opportunity for apps to use up your data in the background unless it really, really, really needs to. Uh, now, once it's on though, you can go into this unrestricted data access area. And let's say, you know, you want your Alaska Airlines app to always have access. You can sort of whitelist apps by going through this, Android Pay, whatever you want. So if there are specific apps that you do still want to always have a data connection, like say WhatsApp or something like that, you can do that by accessing it there. So uh, otherwise that is pretty much it. This has just been sort of a second preview of Android and if we find more there could be a preview three but I think that's probably going to be it for the most part the rest of the stuff is does really behind the the scene stuff that we can't necessarily show you on video uh, if you guys find out more though and want us to uh to show that off as well we can do that otherwise we're joy life peace